It's been a month since my last video, the longest break so far in between my posts. Other commitments apart from YouTube kept me extremely busy making it difficult to find time. This video is going to be about SD card readers. I hope you will find it useful. As year 2023 is coming to an end, I would like to thank everyone who watched my channel. Subscribe to it and like the videos. Special thanks to my patrons and channel members for their extra support. I am looking forward to creating more interesting content in year 2024. Wishing you all the best for the upcoming year. May it bring you a lot of happiness and prosperity and proficiency with Arduino microcontrollers. So here is the SD card module. It is an SPI device, so it has MISO, MOSI, CLOCK and chip select pins, which are standard for such a device. There is a slot where you can insert the SD card. In my case, this is 8GB high density card. Let's look at how this module should be connected to Arduino. Connecting ground and VCC is straightforward. Then we connect the clock to digital pin 13, MISO. 2.12 and MOSI 2.11. These connections cannot be changed. The last one is the chip select and through this pin the device is identified on the SPI bus. In my case I chose to use pin 10. To control this SD card module from Arduino code we need to use two libraries. The first one is the SPI library necessary to control the SPI devices and the second is the SD library. These libraries are included in the Arduino IDE installation by default and do not have to be installed separately. Like any other library, the SD library comes with a few example sketches, which is a great place to start. While exploring these examples, I noticed something peculiar. It appears that sd.h library is essentially a layer on top of another library that was created before. This becomes quite clear when you compare the two example codes, card info and file. In the card info example, you will notice three classes that are not present in the other example. The commands to initiate SD card are different. The file example appears to be easier to use. Trying to solve the mystery surrounding the library, I stumbled upon a thread on the Arduino forum where the individual behind the code clarified that he initially created the library called sdfat. This sdfat library served as a foundation for the standard library provided in Arduino IDE. The individual explained. SD is a wrapper for sdfat. When I wrote sdfat, I designed three main classes, sd2 card, SD volume and SD file. The Arduino group wrote a wrapper class to simplify I.O. to SD cards that contains the three classes. You can't easily integrate the functionality of both in one sketch. So in this video I will compare both methods to try to achieve the same results for the first few sketches that I will write and explain. Afterwards I will switch to using easier approach demonstrated in the file example. First we will look at how to declare and initialize SD cards. Both methods require the same libraries. However, the first method requires three additional classes that we mentioned earlier, while the second method does not need them. Regardless of the method, we need to connect the chip select pin of the SD card to Arduino Digital Pin 10. In setup, we open Serial Monitor and then we initialize the SD card. The command to initialize SD card is different depending on the method used. In both cases, if the initialization fails, the program will stop and go into an endless loop. Otherwise, we output a message stating that it was successful. Next, we'll try to display technical information about the SD card that we have just initialized. Let's start by identifying the type of SD card. There are three types of SD cards. Two for standard capacity and one for high capacity. We can identify them using these labels or values 1, 2 or 3. In the first method of card initialization, 
we have a cart object that has a type attribute. We can write code to check the value of the type attribute and based on the result output that information to the serial monitor. And how can we display cart type information using the second method? This is the thing, you can't. I searched for quite a bit and realized that initializing the SD card in this way does not allow you to access its technical information. Let's talk about the size of the SD card and how data is organized on it. Before we look at the code, it's important to understand the basic structure of storing data on the SD card. The smallest unit of data on the SD card is a block, which is half a byte in size. These blocks are organized into clusters, which are consecutive groups of blocks used for file allocation. All the clusters together form a volume, which represents a logical partition on the SD card. The volume has its own specific file system, defining how files and directories are organized and accessed within that volume. In the first initialization method, we work with a volume object. This object has two attributes, the number of clusters and the number of blocks per cluster. To calculate the volume size, we multiply these two attributes together. However, since each block is only half a byte, we need to divide the result by two to get the size in kilobytes. We can also display the type of file system used on the SD card. To do this, we can use the FAT type attribute of the volume object. There are three types of file systems, FAT12, FAT16 and FAT32. To display the file system type, we can use these lines of code. Now let's combine all these commands into a single sketch and run it to see the result. But first we need to connect SD card to Arduino, starting with ground and VCC connections, and then we continue with SPI connections, including chip select going to digital pin 10. Here is the composite sketch. Obviously, we would use functionality from the FAT library, as the alternative approach doesn't provide functionality to display this technical information. Here is the declaration section, which includes libraries, SD FAT classes, and the chip select pin. In the setup, we have code to initialize the module. Continuing in the setup, we identify and display the card type. Then we initialize the volume and display both volume size and volume type. Let's load the code to observe how this sketch works. All information is displayed correctly. Now let's move on to listing the content of the SD card. We can do it for both initialization methods. In the first method, we use the SD file object called root that represents the main directory of the volume. Before we can use it, we need to initialize the volume in the same way we did when displaying SD card technical information in the previous sketch. By using the ls method, which is similar to the ls-lr command in Unix, we can see all the files in the main directory and its subdirectories along with their creation dates and sizes. Let's load the sketch to Arduino and see the result in the serial monitor. We see all the files on the SD card, including subdirectories. In the second initialization method, displaying the content of the SD card is much more difficult. Imagine we have a directory name saved in the variable called dir. Now if we use the open next file method, it will assign the first file in that directory to the variable called entry, which represents a file object. When we run the open next file method again, it will assign the next file it finds. We can keep doing this until we go through all the files in the directory. Each file object has three attributes, name, is directory, and size. The name attribute gives the name of the file, the is directory attribute tells us if the file is actually a directory or not, and the size attribute tells us the size of the file. Here we have no attribute for the creation date of the file. 
Now we can create a function called display directory that will list all the files in a given directory, including subdirectories, by passing the directory to the function as a parameter. To handle nested subdirectories, we'll use recursion in the function, meaning that if we encounter a subdirectory, we'll call the same function again for that subdirectory. By using the num top, we can create an indent for each level of nested subdirectory. This will help us display the files in a structured and organized manner, making it easier to understand the directory structure. Inside the endless loop, we continuously read files and assign them to a file object called entry. If the assignment is successful, we first attempt to create an indention. Initially, there will be none, as the numtop parameter was set to zero for the first execution. Next, we print the name of the file. If the object happens to be a directory, we recursively execute the display directory function for that directory, increasing the numtop value by one. This ensures that all the files in that subdirectory will be displayed with an additional tab indention. On the other hand, if the file is not a directory, we display its size. After processing each file object, it is important to close it properly. To display the entire content of the SD card, we run this function for the root directory. Let's send the code to the microcontroller and check the data sent to the serial monitor. You can see all the files on the SD card listed, but the information is displayed differently than in a previous method. Now that we know how to display the content of the SD card, let's try to open the file in the project subdirectory and display its content. Let's take a peek into that file so we know what the result should be. We have a list of five of my Arduino projects created on this channel. After initializing the SD card, we use the open method to open the project TXT file and assign it to the file variable. If the file can be opened in a loop, we read characters from it and save them into a string variable. We do this until we encounter the end of line character. If we do, that means we have read the entire line and we output it to the serial monitor. We repeat the process until we reach the end of the file. This way we display the entire content. When done, we need to close the file. Let's load the code onto the microcontroller and see if this works. All five lines of text were displayed properly. Next, let's look at creating the text file on the SD card and filling it with data. You might be surprised to find out that here we also use the open method. So when we run that method with the name of the file that does not exist, Arduino will attempt to create that file. If the process is successful, we may write a few lines of code into the file using the print method. When done, we close the file. When the operation succeeds, we send the appropriate message to the serial monitor. We also send a failure message if the file failed to be created. Let's send the code to the microcontroller and run it. We get the success message. I will now take the SD card out and plug it into the computer. As you can see, the file we have just created is there. Let's open it and you can see all the lines of text we populated. Now that we have learned how to create a text file, add lines of text to it, and then display that content, we can explore the process of editing such file by removing or modifying lines of text. When I started working on this tutorial, I thought of a straightforward process. Taking the text file, let's use the one we have just created, and making modifications, while adding content is a simple task. It always appends to the end of the file. So what do we do if we need to correct data or remove specific lines of text? When you look at the file, you see some inconsistencies that require corrections. To address this, I'll open yet another file and process the original file line by line. If a line is correct, it is seamlessly rewritten to the new file. However, when adjustments are needed, such as here when the line was in uppercase, we write a corrected value into the new file. In instances where a line needs to be deleted, we simply skip writing it to a new file. 
When the process is complete, my initial plan was to remove the original file and rename the temporary file to match the original file name. I assumed the existence of the rename method, but I was wrong. Such method does not exist. So the only feasible option for editing and correcting the file is to open a new file, rewrite the content to it and make the necessary adjustment in the process. This results in having two files at the end of the process. Not ideal, but at least it was not a complete failure. Let's quickly review the code. We start by opening the text file that we want to correct. If successful, we proceed to open the second temporary file. Then we implement a loop similar to one used when displaying the content of the file. We read lines one by one and subject them to conditions. In our case, we aim to change the third line to lower case and ignore the fifth line. Both files need to be closed at the end. Here also I include error messages in case either of the two files fails to open. Now let's load the code onto the microcontroller for the last time. The program is finished. I will once again remove the SD card and inspect it on my computer. And what do you know? The new file is created and the content looks ok. That concludes this video. We have established that SD card readers are excellent devices for data logging, for saving readings from various sensors to a text file. But for operations like opening the file and data manipulation, not so much. In this video I only scratched the surface. I am eager to explore working with more complex files like bitmaps or raw video footage, learning to send images or videos frame by frame to devices like OLED display via I2C interfaces. It's a fascinating but much more complex subject and I will definitely create some videos on that topic in the future. But for now, this is it. I will see you guys in my next video. Ciao!